Now then I'm gonna open this bag. Alright, I got my power supply turned on. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna turn on I'm hooking up to this the two outside pins. Alright, you see that? Now that is a regular tail light. Now this here is the now if I've got the the problem with LEDs is they're polarity sensitive. It seems like that may be a you know if you happen to have the wires hooked up backwards on your vehicle, how does that work? That's what I want to know. Now I'm gonna pull one of these bulbs out of here. It's still the wedge type, just like we had before. I'm going to put this in here. Wow, that's nice and bright, isn't it? Nice, bright light. A volt equals 10 milliamps. All right. Now, this will start scrolling across that screen in a minute when that program loads. Okay, so I'm going to put this, see the little plus on this? I'm going to zero this first. See how I zeroed it? See, when I zeroed it, what it, it went up to the middle. So now it's zeroed. Okay, now then, we're going to look at this very closely. Now I'm going to put this light in here. See that spike? That light's getting really hot really fast. All right, see how much it's pulling? Now each one of those graticule, one, two, three, all right, now look at that again. See how it jumps up? That is two and a half amps is what you're getting there. Now, I don't have it connected to the tail lamp because that one there is not as bad, but you can see that thing. See it jump up two and a half, and it spikes up before it levels out. Okay, now let's look at this one here. This is one of these, which is pretty cool the way these are made. Look at that. Very little current at all being pulled by that. And look how bright it is. Isn't that amazing? All right, now, now that I've established that, we're going to remember to turn off our little amp clamp so that it doesn't. I got to turn off my voltage supply. And I got to turn off my. I'm going to go ahead and pull these back out. I'm going to have to pull them back out to replace these bulbs with the LED bulbs that I've got here. See, I got both of these. Now these are supposed to work where the backup lights are as well as where the others are. Okay. Now then. Okay, I'm gonna pull that one out of there. And I'm gonna put this one in here. I'm gonna put it right in there where that one goes. And I'm gonna take this one out. Pull that one. You notice that one's only got one contact because it's an 1156. This is supposed to actually work for both of those. Okay. Now then, I'm going to temporarily put this back in place. Just like that. All right, now let me go right here. I'm going to open this thing up so I don't have to. And I'm going to turn on the turn signal on that side. If I can get that the right one. Turn off the hazards. Turn on the turn signal. All right, look at that. Here's the problem. The turn signal still works, but it blinks really fast because there's not enough current there for that to work right. All right, now let me turn on the turn signal on the other. Now this one here is trying to act up. See how that one blinks normally? All right. So the hazards don't blink too fast, but the turn signal do. It thinks there's a bulb blown. See how that's blinking? 
think there's a bulb blown because I put the LED light in there. All right, now then, I'm gonna lock the park brake and put it in reverse and look at the backup lights. All right, there's the backup light. Now look at the difference in the color. That's gonna be like a 2700 Kelvin. Now this is gonna be like a 5000 Kelvin, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna have to put resistors in here so that this I bought these from Amazon. That's a little resistor, a little 50 watt, 6 ohm resistor, right? Okay, it's not polarity sensitive because it's not a diode. Alright, so on this here, brown is gonna be tail light. Green is gonna be the turn signal. Alright, and so what they're trying to get you to do is to hook this from ground. You can hook it from ground to that light, or you can hook it, but, but when you're in a hurry, you see these, these pass all the way through. They don't have a block. All right, so what they do is they have you put this, pull the wire in there. You may have to spread that out on a screwdriver or something to get it on there. Yeah, I don't like it a bit. Hmm. Spread it out. Like that. Put that in there. You only want the one wire to go in it, not the brown and the green. Then you slide that down in there. Then you can pinch that in place. Now that bites into both wires. And it connects those two wires together. And like I say, as a professional automobile mechanic, I don't like these scotch locks. I just don't. But they are what they are. I fold that thing over, lock that down, and keep it from shorting out. Now, this other one, I'm going to spread it out a little bit too. It's a little aggravating to do that. Because it's going to have to either. Hmm. All right. I can. Well, this is what I like. Hmm. All right, I spread it out. See, I spread it out a little bit. All right. Now then, you put the other one, the other end of this in there, and make sure it goes out the other side a little bit. You can do that on these scotch locks, but you couldn't on the others. Mm. All right. That's got those two wires there connected together. Now, if I wanted to do a really nice belt and suspenders job, I would mount this with some screws or something. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to let that drop in there and pluck that. This ain't hurting the doggone thing. See, as I snap this back in there, we're going to let that, we're going to see if the, the turn signal works like it's supposed to now. I'm just going to go ahead and snap that back in. I'm being really optimistic, but I can unsnap it if I need to. All right. Now then. Okay, as you can see, I put the resistor in there, and now the turn signal works exactly the way it's supposed to. So, mission accomplished on that. And that's what those resistors are there for. Everything's lined up in there. It's all lined up just like it's supposed to be. And we got our whole Okay.